First thing we need to do to dock is to get our target ship closer to our launch area. And so we're going to speed up the time a little bit and wait for this guy to get closer to here. We want it to be a little bit behind because we're going to be using the metaphor of a speeding police car. Uh, a police car catching a speeding person. So if the speeding person is going 2200 meters per second around the earth, we need to catch up to that speed so that we can drive up right up next to them. So once we get up there, we might be too far ahead or too far behind and we'll need to make corrections. And that's where the difficulty comes in with rendezvous. Um, once the rendezvous happens, the docking is relatively easy, but it's lining up the ship perfectly. That is the difficult part. Once we're up high in the atmosphere, we're going to go into our map mode and watch our apoapsis get closer to our target ship. First thing we're going to do is click on this, set as target, and then we're going to let this line move until it meets this line here. And we're, I'm tilting over this way because we still need to worry about making a good launch. Most importantly is that we want these lines to be parallel to each other. Now this, this orbit is just a little bit eccentric. And that'll be a good example to show how to meet up with an eccentric orbit. So we're just going to keep letting this number grow and grow until it meets this 100, me 100 meters, 100,000 meters above the surface. We're still just burning and burning until we can get these two lines to meet up. Now once we get close enough, these two markers here are going to appear. What that means is that these two lines are close enough for the computer to say, hey, you're close, want me to help you figure out how to dock? So once we hit the 100,000 meters, which is the same distance from the planet that our target is at, we cut the, cut the burn, and now we're going to let it speed up until we get to here. And this is just like a regular orbit where we want to get to our apoapsis and we want to create an orbit around the, uh, around the planet. Mostly because we don't, we need to have an orbit before we even think about docking. Obviously, if we don't have an orbit, we're going to crash back into the planet. We're not going to dock at all. So right now, we're just doing pretty standard burn to extend. Oh, ran out of fuel. To extend our periapsis so that we have a full orbit. Now you notice these two guys are getting closer to each other. That's good. We want these two things to be exactly on top of each other. That's how we know we're going to have an intersect. And I just cut the, the burn right there because as we can see, I'll slow it down a little bit. As you can see, this orbit here is getting closer and closer to this one. Once these meet, that means we're going the exact same speed. And in fact, since we're very close to each other, imagine the cop car chasing that speeder. Once those two cars are the same speed and they're only, let's say, 50 yards from each other, the cop only needs to speed up 5 miles per hour to catch up to him. As opposed to if he were a mile away, he'd want to speed up to 20 miles per hour or more so that he could catch him faster. Obviously, if that cop sped up 5 miles per hour a mile away, he, he would catch up to him, assuming the speeder doesn't change his speed. But it would take a lot longer. And, you know, we could be patient, but we want to get this done now. So, basically, what this means here is that this is the separation. Once our ship moves all the way around and gets to this point, we're going to be, I believe, here, and our target ship is going to be here. What we want is we want those two ships to be in the exact same place. So the separation is going to be 97 kilometers. So that's how far away we're going to be at, at our closest point. These two things indicate what, our, what the closest point we're going to be is and tells us what the separation is going to be. So we want that number to be as small as possible because ideally we want it to be zero. And that's going to be tough to do to get it exactly zero, but... We wanted to get it as low as possible. So in order to do that, we noticed that they kept moving closer as we extended our periapsis out. That makes sense because we want our orbit to match this orbit. If these two orbits matched exactly, we would be over on this side of the planet and we would be exactly the same distance if we were going the exact same speed. So let's burn a little bit and let's get these closer. You can see that separation going down. Let's see how close we can get this. So. 
See? Oh, now we burned a little bit too much, so we're gonna we're gonna back off just a little bit. We're gonna leave it there. And you'll notice that our orbits are essentially the same, but you'll notice that the blue orbit, our, our orbit, is smaller than the green. That means we're gonna go faster than our target ship. If these were exactly the same, our separation here would be the same separation that we are here. Distance here is about 131,000 meters away from each other. That's how far our ships are away from each other. And here, they're going to be 5.4. 5 so that's how we're going to catch up to it. Now, if I were to make these orbits equal, like I said before, then we'd stay at the same distance. But we made it smaller to go faster. If I were to move this orbit further away, as in outside of the green, moving it this way, the separation would be even further because then, then we're going to go too slow and our, and our separation is going to be even more. So right here is perfect, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. So right now, we're going to prograde to move the circle outwards. Let's see. Our separation is going to be 100 kilometers, and we're going to be, we're going to be slower. So we're going to be before the ship, because we are slower than it going around the Earth. So let's say, let's slow down to move that line in, because now we notice, hey, we're going to be behind it. So we need, we're saying, hey, we need to speed up, which means we need to make our orbit smaller. And once we do that, you can see the separation decrease even more. So mostly what you want to care about is not necessarily thinking about which way you want to burn or what the circle should look like, but you want that separation to be as small as possible. Another useful method is using the maneuver node capability. If we increase it, like I said before, that'll, it shows you what'll happen in the future. That separation goes up and down, so... Here we'd want to slow down. If you if we tug that, obviously the separation gets lower. But on a on a simple, if, if everything's on that same plane and when you launch, you don't necessarily need the maneuver node. So now that we're really close together, we're gonna speed up time. As we're coming around the planet, you can see that we're in a slightly tighter orbit than our target. That means that we're if you imagine a racetrack, we're in that inside track and we're going faster than our target just a little bit so as we get closer to our intersect intersection here once we get a little bit before it what we want to do is is slow down our speed relative to the target in order to do that we look at our, our targets already selected because once you get close to it it'll switch to it but if it's not you can click here and that'll change it from orbit to surface to target we want it to be on target what that means is that we're going 100 meters per second relative to our target. It's not relative to the Earth, that's not our speed to space, that's our speed to the target. So we're going 100 meters per second faster, which is our plan all along because we wanted that separation to go down to zero by going faster than our target. That's like the cop going five miles per hour faster than it's than the speeder. So what we need to do is we need to burn retro, we need to slow down our speed relative to our target. So we're gonna move this nav ball down here, over here, down to retro. And you'll actually want to do this before you hit the inner intersection. But we want to get this down to zero. We want to slow down the cop car speed so that it's the same speed as the as the speeder. So once we get that down to zero, and you can get it close enough, it doesn't have to be exactly zero, and you'll see why in a second. Then we'll go into the map mode and we'll try to visually find the target ship. It'll show up as a green thing like this. 6.5 kilometers is pretty close. I'd like to be closer, but this is a good speed. Once we're this close, the, the most simple way to do it is to point directly at it, and you know it's because you'll be pointing at this purple thing here. Not the one with three prongs, but the one that looks like a circle. We get right on top of it, and then we'll do a burn. And we want this prograde marker to be exactly on it. And see so here, what I've done there is the prograde marker is up and to the left, and I moved my target down to the right so that it would kind of pull that yellow marker over it. And see I'm doing that again to get it exactly on top of it. Now you don't want to go too fast. You don't want to go more than maybe 20 meters per second depending on how fat, far away you are. If you're under 3 or 2 kilometers you only want to go about 5 or 10 meters per second. And that's just because of reaction speed. We're going to need to turn this craft around when we're ready so that we can burn retro. So once this happens you can, you can speed up and see because we pointed at it, and because our program marker, which represents what direction we're going in, is pointed at the ship, this number decreases because that's the distance between our ships. 
And at some point, this number is going to start going back up again. And at that point, and already what we should do is turn around and point retro. Once this number starts going up, oh, see it already went up. That's when we're going to want to burn again and get this down to zero. Now, if I was a, a, a rocket scientist, I would know exactly where to burn so that this number would be zero at this point. But that's it's pretty difficult. Whereas this one's this this method is pretty simple. It's pretty easy. So again, we're going to burn right towards it again. And see, this is it's a pretty simple method. Back to 20 meters per second. Hopefully that'll bring us nice and close. We're speeding up time again. We're getting closer and closer. And once it hits 1.1, then it's going to start measuring meters, and that's how you how you know you're getting really close. So see, we're just we're just within 500. We can even see it if this marker wasn't in a way. So again, once it's really close, we want to burn retro because if we don't, we're going to overshoot it. And at this point, we don't want to do 20 meters per second again. We just want to do it nice and want to get it kind of exact at this point. Here, I got it down to zero exactly. We don't want to burn here. We want to burn right towards it again. And this time, maybe just 10. And I picked a very maneuverable ship for this, so I can turn around really quick and point retro. If your ship isn't as maneuverable, you probably don't want to go as fast because might take you too long to turn your ship around by that time your target ship has flown past you that's why we're not going too fast we can always speed up time so it's coming in it's coming in I'm speeding up slowing down and right now I'm feeling a little like I sped up too much burned retro so that these two would slow down to each other now let's get us zeroed out so that we're going the exact same speed now what's cool is that when we go to the map mode, our orbits are exactly matched. Which makes sense because we're going the exact same speed as each other. Two objects in space can't go two different speeds and have the same orbit. So our target is this docking port here, this is our docking port here. They both need to face this direction, they can't be upside down. Even though that looks a little bit more like a docking port I think when it's flipped upside down. But they both have to be facing this direction, both have to be the same size. So now that we're this close, this is where you kind of abandon all math and science and you just uh, you just eyeball it and you just figure it out. So we want to be kind of move over here and then we want to move in here. So let's try to get this ship oriented the right way. So even I don't know what direction's what. So just about there. We're gonna and here's a little trick with the RCS. First we're gonna turn the RCS on. If I hit H and N, we'll move, we'll, we'll thrust so that it thrusts in the same direction as if I hit shift to turn on the main engine. So if we just tap H, see, it gives us just a little bit of thrust. And we just wanted just a little bit. I turned off RCS because if you use RCS to maneuver the ship around, like to rotate it, it will add speed to the ship because it's, it's literally burning. Whereas just using the little gyroscopes don't change your meters per second. So we want to go right here again, right on top of the prograde, because that's the direction our ship is moving in. Turn RCS on, and then right when we're in position, we want to cut our speed. We want to cut this down to zero. We're going to hit N. H and N, H goes forward, N goes backwards. If we tap N, that zeroes, zeroes it out. We're going to turn off RCS again, and now we can point right at the ship. Best way to do it is to look at the nav well. We want to get this purple thing. Usually this isn't an issue, but if you right click on the docking port and say set as target, it'll set the docking port as the target. And if you click on your docking port and say control from here, then that'll, that'll tell the computer to control from that docking port so that this is lined up and you can use the nav well effectively. On these two ships, you know, the, the docking port is kind of right on top of the pod so it doesn't really you know it doesn't really change anything but for other ships it's a good tip to know so now that we're facing each other and going the same speed we're going to use that same rcs trick again we're going to turn our cs on we're going to hit h it's just a little bit of speed we want this program marker to be right on the purple so we're gonna, gonna try to drag it over get us lined up 
Now, one frustrating thing is that you can't have our SIS on usually during docking. Now, say that worked anyway, but and I almost wish it hadn't because it's important to turn off SIS. So, the, the, we'll do that again just to show because they happen real quick, but the magnets will kind of automatically attract the two ships together. So let's get these ships away from each other again. We're going to turn off SIS. The two brackets near the backspace switches ships. We're going to go back and forth like that. So we're going to switch to this ship. We're going to make sure its SIS is off because they both need to be off. And we're going to switch back to this guy. And we're going to give it some more. And switching ships messes up the, the targeting too. So I need to retarget the ship. I need to redo this. And we're going to RCS our way back to docking again. And a good thing about having another ship that has fuel and power and all that is that you can use both ships to get yourself docked. And you can move the other ship so that it faces the right way. So SAS is off. And so you don't even need to be really that close. Like this is, the yeah, SEO is kind of way off. But the magnets will do their job and they'll lock it in place for you. So it's actually a pretty easy thing once you know what you're doing, but it does take a long time to get a hang of it and to understand all the physics that go beyond it. So that's how to successfully dock a spaceship. Hope you learned a little something. And uh, practice makes perfect.